Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Um, I'll be talking with Merrick. He's an inventor from Utah, and uh, Merrick had humble beginnings, and he uh, learned to, I love this, what he said, use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. <laughs> from a young age, Merrick learned to work hard, repair, and improve things, to be creative, to solve problems. His motto has been, there is always a solution Sometimes you just have to get more creative. And I first found out about Merrick watching Shark Tank in April of 2021. Merrick demonstrated a product that I instantly fell in love with. His product, in my opinion, turns ordinary food into superfoods. Uh, today's topic is the probiotic maker. Merrick, thank you for being on my show. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. You know, so I'm I'm curious, what is your story? How did life bring you to invent the probiotic maker? So um, I had had some uh, health issues in the past. I was put on a really strong antibiotic. Um, it was actually an abscess tooth that was so painful it hurt to breathe. And then uh, we didn't have insurance or anything. I finally found a dentist who had helped me out and the tooth had ended up, ended up dying. And the pain was excruciating because I went to one dentist, then I went to an ENT and they said, it's not that. And then I went to another dentist. And finally, that last dentist was drilling and there was so much pressure that the pus shot out onto his shoulder. And the wow. dentist is like, I've never seen that. So that tells you how painful it was. So he put me on this super strong antibiotic and man, that nuked my system. I was explosive for six weeks and I tried the probiotic pills to restore my probiotics. Uh, that didn't work. I tried the expensive uh, gut health yogurts and that didn't do it. The only thing that solved it was I pounded the freshest probiotics I could get and just, you know, three times a day and I pound them and that stopped it immediately. And so, so I knew the importance of probiotics, you know, there's studies out there, like hundreds of studies every year. I mean, you, you research it almost any topic and it's just amazing. So it's kind of like fresh fruits and veggies, you know, they're incredible. They're a gift from God that to bless your life and, and, you know, it, and so then they uh, started writing prescriptions for probiotics. I'm like, that's great. Now let's get some prescriptions for fresh or frozen veggies too. <laughs> yes. From but, antibiotics to probiotics. Yes. And so, you know, that, that is the story we hear so often. So many people get um, wrapped up in this chemical annihilation, whether it's chemicals in their diets that are killing their gut flora or chemistry from a prescription that, you know, the job of the purpose of an antibiotic against yeah. life is to wipe out among other things, bacteria. Yeah. And, and, and that's so important in your guts. And, you know, when you get out of balance on that bacteria, on that gut flora, I like what um, I, I, you remind me of something Jordan Rubin said. Uh, he was the founder of a company called the Garden of Life and went on to some other things. But he said the best way to get rid of bad gut flora is to crowd it out with good. Mm. And you seem to have taken that approach, meaning capsules wasn't good enough. So you just needed the best fresh source of and what was that source? So that I just got the freshest yogurts I could find because this was before they had, you know, uh, commercial keepers and the like. So fast forward, you know, we had, we have eight kids now. And we, my wife was pregnant with our eighth. And so I went to the grocery store and I bought four cases of fresh yogurt. So that's 32 yogurts. So guess how long those yogurts lasted with my kids. I had even hid some in the basement refrigerator. But in less than two days, they ate them all. They even found the ones I had hidden in the basement refrigerator. So um, my wife and I, it's like, I can't keep this up. I can't afford four cases of yogurt every two days. So my wife bought four yogurt makers that have those little plastic cups, eight cups each. So 32 cups, uh, plastic cups and 32 tops. So she would make the yogurt. She would heat it up and 
And uh, you can actually see a clip of her making some yogurt in the little video that we did on the website. But you'll see her stirring it. You have to heat it up, stir it, and then you got to cool it down. Some people put ice in their fridge or in their sink to cool down the pot. And I'm like, that is gross <laughs> and a waste of time. And so, so we hardly ever made the uh, fresh probiotics because it took forever. And the starters cost more than a quart of yogurt they're supposed to make. I'm like, how's that going to help us? You know? And so, <laughs> so I said, there's got to be a better way. And so after 27 prototypes, we ended up with the perfect inspired solution. It, we call it the probiotic maker now. And so you just take the starter pack, you know, just one of these has 11 types of probiotic seeds inside. And then you just pour it into the bottle of milk or milk alternative. And then you take the probiotic maker and slide it, slide it over the top of the bottle and plug it in. That's it. And that's absolutely dish. beautiful. And I, you know, when, when I, when I saw you on TV demonstrating, I thought, oh my goodness, that is such a perfect, simple, easy oh. solution. Um, I am surprised that no one's thought of this yeah. yet until you. But now, during development, I got a lot of pushback because the industry, the experts, they're like, you have to do 42, 43, 45 Celsius. I'm like, that is a lethal fever temperature. I don't want to grow stuff at a lethal fever temperature. And that can kill a lot of the mesophilic and the medium heat cultures. So then... Uh, I looked into, you know, the kefirs and, and the like, and, but they make those at a much at too cold of a temperature for the thermophilic cultures to thrive. So I had the inspiration. If you want probiotics to thrive at body temperature, why not grow them at body temperature? So the probiotic maker targets body temperature. So you get, it's not too hot. It's not too cold. You get the best of both worlds, the best of the the thermophilic and yogurt type cultures and the mesophilic and medium heat cultures. So it's perfect. It's, it's the way your body was designed. to have so. you, you know what else the neat thing about this in doing so, and I don't know how long it takes to make yogurt by uh, other conventional methods or how long it takes to uh, make kefir, but I would suspect that it's significantly longer than that because at those temperatures, how can cultures thrive? Mm -hmm. But when you're giving them such a perfect environment and what blew me away is that you're plugging this thing in at night and waking up in the morning to yogurt. Yep. So you've got trillions of fresh probiotics. The maker automatically warms to the right temperature and then it shuts off and lets the it gently warms the the milk or milk alternative to the right temperature and then it grows trillions and trillions of probiotics and you know it worked because you you see that it's turned tart and that it's thickened if there's proteins present and so it's like a perfect science experiment every single time you get the you get you know that it's working because every time if, if it wasn't working, it wouldn't take the probiotics wouldn't consume the sugars and the carbs and turn them uh, into the acids that make it turn tart and then thicken the proteins if present. So yeah, yes. it's, it's amazing. It's a miraculous process. It's, it's so easy. It's like Kiefer, they do that on for like days on the counter at cooler temperatures. This, and, yeah, it's just overnight. <laughs> For those um, hearing the tart, that taste, um, I've heard it well referred to as the power of sour. It is taking something that, you know, didn't have that tartness. It wasn't sour uh, to begin with. And now it's not only soured, but it's cultured with live bacteria that is going to nourish your own gut flora and, and create that environment for optimal balance of your gut for it's a beautiful beautiful thing the power of sour and that's what i mean by turning an ordinary dairy or milk substitute product into something that's a truly a superfood now something that actually has like more what's a superfood something that might have a physiological significant benefit other than just providing nutrition yeah now i mean 
it does taste great. You know, the neighborhood kids were over, uh, you know, you, you sweeten it to taste and flavor it. So the neighborhood kids were over once and my wife texts me, they've had four servings each and they're begging for more. Mm-hmm. I reply, and it's good for them and it's cheap. Let them have all they want. That's right. So yeah, you get all these benefits and then you can flavor it how you want. It's flexible. You can use fat free. That's where I lost uh, 27 pounds with no exercise. I had a broken foot, so I wasn't exercising and I was just saving room for more pie. But, you know, research for yourself. There's a lot of studies out there saying about, you know, gaining and maintaining a healthy weight. Uh, You can use whole milk like uh, the keto people just love it because you start with the full fat milk and the probiotics consume the sugars and carbs. So when you're left, you flavor it with a sugar alternative. And then you've got a full fat and low, low carb uh, keto treat. And it's, it's amazing. But you can also strain it to make Greek yogurt, authentic Greek yogurt. You can strain it longer to make kefir cheese, cream cheese. You know, we've got a lot of videos on the website. And I apologize, they're not very good. But, but uh, you know, you can just see for yourself. Uh, you know, I just like the, the good old fat free and it tastes so creamy and rich. When I give it to people at shows, they're like, I'm like, guess how much fat's in that? They're like, oh, I don't know, you know? And then I'm like, none. And I show them the bottle. I'm like, I don't know how, but it thickens those proteins and it tastes creamy somehow. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, at, there's going to be people at this point in in hearing our conversation that already just want to go to your website and check it out. So let's give it a mention now, um, the probioticmaker.com, or not the pro, just probioticmaker.com, right? Yes, yes, probioticmaker.com. And, and for we, our audience, you gave a coupon code. What? Uh, how does yep. that work? So you just enter Dr. Haley, like for Dr. Haley at checkout and you'll save 15% off of the probiotic maker. Great. And, uh, and you provided a, a link. Guarantee. I'm going to put that link in uh, below this video on YouTube. And uh, if it's on a podcast or whatever, and I have the ability to put a link there, uh, possible, possibly below the audio, you'll see a link that when you click it automatically applies that coupon for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate you, uh, Uh, doing this and letting people know our goal is we just want to help people. And this product can help millions and millions of people because we all need probiotics. We, you couldn't live without probiotics. Your immune system supposedly is like what 70% or more probiotics. I, it's just incredible. Yeah. And, and I'll say that we hardly understand it. Although we know it's important. We know that when your gut is killed off, Um, That is not a good thing. And when it's nurtured to health, we know that's a good thing. And that in the past, people used cultured uh, food and cultured beverages instead of refrigeration. And, and, you know, I I like to think of something that was written literally about this very same thing about 2000 years ago. And it, it said, it said, stop drinking only water and use a little wine for your stomach and your frequent infirmities. Now, Wine is grape juice that has soured and become probiotic. And it probably wasn't the wine that we have today where it's, you know, it's probably wasn't a 14 to 17% alcohol. It was probably a very light, almost like a kombucha, uh, low alcohol, but use a little. And the instruction was use a little for your stomach. I believe that that was written about probiotics in the power of sour and the power of grape juice that has fermented being good for the stomach and the immune system, not about getting wasted, (laughs) but literally 2000 years ago, this information was, was known. Yeah. I I like the study. Well, you know, yeah, to differentiate, I always think of, you know, when I'm teaching a, church class or something, I always think, you know, did they ever say juice? So, you know, they very rarely would say the term juice. So if you're talking a uh, fresh uh, wine or whatever, and that you're growing the probiotics in a very short time, you know, that you're not going to go out and drink wine and get probiotics. Now, you know, you don't get probiotics from commercial pickles or sauerkraut, all this stuff where they've killed all the probiotics. So 
yeah, it, the natural, freshest, the natural is always best in my mind. That just makes more sense. Fresh fruits, fresh veggies, fresh, uh, fresh probiotics. You know, you just can't go wrong. They, they were designed for our bodies, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Merrick, they sometimes pasteurize these things, killing them all off, or they add preservatives, which, you know, once they're done killing in the uh, sauerkrauts or the fermented beverages, the yogurts. And once they're done killing off in there, are they not going to continue to kill off when they're in your own gut? I, you know, I like people to understand that preservatives are anti against bio life. They're, an they're forms of antibiotics put into the food uh, to kill yeah. off, you know, uh, small life forms. That's why the food lasts longer. It has um, nothing to do with making the food better so it lasts longer. It's making yeah. it uninhabitable for bacteria, mold, yeast, and fungus, and things that actually have to be living in us for us to survive. Yeah, the good stuff. So another thing to remember is when you use ours with milk alternatives, you have to make sure there's not harsh preservatives because that will kill the probiotic seeds and they can't grow. So, you know, go to our website or, you know, check around uh, to see what brands have worked because uh, there are brands that, like you say, they have those antibiotics, those preservatives uh, to preserve okay. freshness. Sometimes it's even like, you know, uh, some strong vitamins or ascorbic acid or something. So yeah, you just have to remember the probiotics need energy to grow. They need natural, real sugars. Second, they, they can't be a lot of harsh preservatives or that would kill the probiotics and they can't grow. And then third is if you want them to thicken, there has to be protein present, a lot of protein. So most of the nut milks, unfortunately, are mostly water. There's not a lot of, a lot of protein in those, um, but you know, like the soy or uh some of the i don't know if i can mention it this 10 gram uh silk protein has a lot of pea protein in it and uh almond and cashews but it, it will thicken as well that's my favorite milk alternative because you know for people who have allergies or concerns about soy or dairy or things bring, bring that out again then uh you say yeah. this part this is your per your personal favorite alternative yeah. yeah this is my favorite it's the silk almond cashew uh, but the 10 G means 10 grams of protein, but okay, they're not getting that from the nuts. They're getting maybe two grams from the nuts, but most of the protein is pea protein. And so, uh, okay. it will thicken up and there's a video of us making this. It's a little globby coming out. Some people don't like that look, but I wanted to show, Hey, it, it will thicken. So this one will thicken, uh, okay. the soy, some of the, uh, higher protein, um, how many uh, carbohydrates are in that? So we can have a kind of a target on that too, because understanding that the carbohydrates are what feeds the. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. This says it only has two total sugars, uh, three grams, uh, oh, two grams of added sugars. So that's, uh, that's what the probiotics are living on. Okay. So yeah, I'm surprised. And I thought there was more sugars that, uh, for those fearing the sugars, uh, don't worry. Once the probiotics get a hold of them, there's not going to be much sugar left. That's another beautiful thing that they're consuming it and changing that for you. I, you know, I, I saw uh, a story about someone that you had given, uh, and I don't know if it was dairy or not, or if it was an alternative, but it was someone who had celiac. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I, do you recall that? I, I read about it somewhere. Yeah, so a good friend of ours, uh, he's actually, it was our bishop, he, uh, he has celiac, and he was in the hospital, uh, they thought he had an intestinal blockage, and so they put, released him and put him on an all-liquid diet for days and days, and they finally said, yeah, you can have a regular meal, so he ate one regular meal, and they had to be rushed to the emergency room, and so there they ran a ct scan they couldn't find a blockage they're like we don't know what's wrong maybe it was food poisoning and they sent him home and i heard if it was food poisoning it would have killed him days ago you know i i just don't think that i'm no doctor you know but it just doesn't make sense scientifically to me that how could food poisoning all of a sudden happen 
uh, you know, last that long. So anyway, I took over a gallon of the fat free uh, that was already made into probiotics. It wasn't flavored. Was it a milk dairy or an alternative? Yeah, it, it was a, a just regular uh, skim milk that we I grew the probiotics in it and then cooled it down. And so I took it over and I said, uh, you know, uh, you know, here's this. And and I see him on, lying on the couch and I thought he was asleep, but he started talking, but he didn't move. It was really eerie. I'm thinking, oh, this is way worse than I realized. So I go home. My wife gets a text saying, oh, all the kids love this stuff. And uh, I'm like, no, no, that's for Bishop. Tell him I'll take over a gallon of whole in the morning because we make whole for our kids. And then I do the fat free for myself. So the next morning was Sunday morning. I ring the doorbell and the door flips open, flies open. And there's Bishop with these great rosy cheeks, big smile. He says, Merrick, I got to tell you, my family calls this Merrick's Miracle Drink. Because the only thing I could tolerate got me back on my feet overnight. And he was he was able to go back to work the next day, Monday morning. It was incredible. The, the gut is the foundation of our, our physical health. It's, you know, what really makes the decisions for the body, including the brain. It, what, it influences the brain, which supposedly the brain's in control of everything, right? <laughs> it's under the influence of our gut and the chemistry that's produced in our, in our metabolism and by our gut flora and so much other stuff that all originates in there. You get that right things are going to get well. What's really interesting is most people think, oh, this is celiac. Um, no gluten, no milk. Well, wait a second. How did this person get well with it? And again, the probiotics are consuming a lot of the challenges that people would have with dairy. They're kill consuming the, the, the lactose and and the different uh, sugars, turning them into a superfood. <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing. And it might be um, counterintuitive, but it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And we're just really beginning to understand in the last decade or so the importance of this since now is when so many people are damaged in their guts. There's been more chemistry in the food than ever before. So now is the time. We, we got to get this right. Stop putting in the toxins and start consuming things that nourish us back to health like probiotic beverages a funny follow-on was uh i was at a uh doing a local trade show uh recently after that and before the show started somebody came over and he said yeah yeah so and so told me i needed to come and talk to you i gotta go uh, to do a booth but uh and i told him this the what had happened and he's like i'm a gastroenterologist I had the hardest time saying that for a long time, <laughs> but I'm a gastroenterologist and all of this is backed by science. The miraculous results that your friend saw are totally, they, they can explain it. They, they, it's backed by science. And so uh, I was at a later subsequent show and this nice little old lady comes walking up and she, she was waiting to talk to me. There were so many people that, you know, they taste the samples and they're all excited and all the booths around us always complain that, that we get so much attention. Everybody's like, this is so good. This is great. And so anyway, this nice little lady waited to be able to talk to me. And she's like, yeah, my son, he, he took his, he's a gastroenterologist. I had to write it down because I'm terrible. I always say that but wrong. But he, uh, she's like, yeah, my son's a gastroenterologist. And he took his to Thanksgiving dinner and shared it with the whole extended family. And then he sent me back to the show to buy one from you. So when a gastroenterologist sends his own mother to buy one, I can't think of a better recommendation than that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. When I, I saw you on uh, TV on, I think it was a Friday night, just last Friday night. Um, I ordered mine over the weekend. I know it's on its way. It's Tuesday today. Today is Tuesday. Can't wait for it to get here. I'll probably make up a follow-up video with our first batch. Um, I'm excited about this. I got a couple geeky questions now that I, I think you're going to have some good answers for. Because uh, this is new to me. I haven't tried these things, and I, I'll be figuring them out by myself, too, and verifying. Let's talk first about consistency of yogurt. Um, what should I 
expect? I know sometimes there might be like things that are curdled, things that are chunky, things that are liquid, like the whey and stuff. What should I expect? And should I try to homogenize it? Or how do you, what do you do? All right. So, so you always start with a fresh sealed pasteurized bottle. So there's no contaminants. And uh, so if you, if you're using dairy milk, there uh, will be some tendency to separate into what's called the whey. That's the whey protein. Like when they make cheese, they have whey left over, or when they make like Greek yogurt, uh, they strain off the acidic whey. And so when you when you're growing a batch, you want to just keep culturing it until it turns tart. And uh, I like to go until it just starts to thicken. It'll thicken up a little bit more, but but I, I'm going to shake it up and flavor the whole bottle. So mm -hmm. I don't need it as thick. When I lost all that weight, I was flavor, I was culturing it like 10 and a half hours. But I realized, well, I, I won't need to add as much sugar if I just culture it uh, till it just starts to culture. And then I, I'm breaking up the protein clumps anyway to shake it, to make it uh, flavor, fla mix in the flavors. So anyway, um. But you'll start to see a little yellowy liquid separate and you know that it's it's finished at that point. Uh, or if I gently rock the bottle and I see that the uh, it's it started to thicken uh, or there's waste separation. So then you just gently take off the cover and go ahead and put it into the fridge. So it's going to be tart, like unflavored yogurt. It's going to have that, you know, a stronger raw flavor smell. You know, if it ever smells like bad milk or builds pressure uh, and the bottles are loading, then that means that there is probably some contamination in the milk or it's old milk. And so just throw those out. Um, you know, I'll replace the starter for you. But uh, yeah, the uh, you just don't ever want to take a chance with your health. But we want to make sure we only grew the good things. And if there was contamination, it will accelerate the growth of the bad stuff too. So, so always be safe. But, but uh, the consistency, it, it can vary. You know, um, you kind of have to glob it out of the, out of the bottle if you uh, cultured it longer. You know, I usually like to go maybe 10 and a half hours to maybe 12 hours for maximum thickness. Uh, if you go a lot longer than that, you'll get a lot more waste separation and it gets really tart. And I want the probiotics to still be thriving and not where they're all consumed all the food and they're getting weaker, you know? So, I mean, th that's fine. All of those, there's trillions and trillions of probiotics. So I just, I, I'm going to play with yeah. that. I'm, I was tested to like, you know, try it for 24 hours just because I like oh. things almost effervescent. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't go. Personally, I wouldn't go over 12 hours. Okay. We have customers who'll go longer. Um, and you, you can watch the videos on the website and see how thick it gets, at, um, you know, after 12 hours. Or we did longer batches with the alternatives to make sure we got definitive results. But yeah, personally, I would go maybe 10 and a half if you want it a lot thicker. So when you shake it up, or if you blend it or whatever, it's going to break up those protein clumps and they're not never going to get as thick as they were. So it, uh, for some people, like I recommend if you're going to blend it, you know, I would say blend the, the, the like the most popular is blend the fresh strawberries or frozen strawberries with some sweetener and some vanilla. And then I add that to the entire bottle or add it to glasses and then stir it in and you'll keep it a little thicker. Um, cause it's more like, a uh, like a protein, uh, probiotic shake, um, uh, yeah, most of the time, but if you go longer, it can get thicker, but I, I wouldn't expect it to be like artificial thickeners and high temperature yogurt thick. Uh, but if you want to make real authentic Greek yogurt, you can use a cheesecloth or a strainer and strain off the whey. Um, and then that it will get thicker and thicker uh, as you do that. Um, like whenever I go to flavor the skim, because the skim will separate a lot more into the whey than the ones with fat, because it's not like the fat molecules are there to kind of make everything smooth. Um, so the, the skim is kind of chunky with thicker chunks and then the whey in between. So whenever I go to flavor a bottle, our dog, I don't know how she knows, but 
she comes running in and just sits there and mm. and she begs for the whey. So I'll pour off the whey and that makes room to flavor the entire gallon. And then I'll put that in her <laughs> dish. And I, I, I have one customer say, you know what, if I don't make this for our great Dane, it will revolt. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, this important. is, this is where you and I differ a little bit because I'm not giving that way to my dog. I'm, I'm going to put that way in the blender with maybe a little bit of honey and some fruit yeah. juice and yeah. you know, turn it into a sports beverage, you know, yeah, rich you in go. the, you so the dogs know, they know this is good <laughs> for know. me. It's some of the most probiotic beverage you can have. It's full of electrolyte yeah. minerals and um, such good, you know, yeah. nutrition for you. And the dogs know, the dogs know this. Oh, they do. And so some people will take the whey and they'll freeze it or freeze some of the other probiotics in ice cube trays. And then they add that to their smoothies and their shakes because it's got the probiotics and it's got the protein. And so uh, there's lots of ways to enjoy it. Now, that's half the fun is you can make up a, a bottle and you can flavor little sample jars and say, mm, all right, I like this. I, I mean, I, I, we made up some kind of a eggnog one year that was oh it was really good i love eggnog but um but i've had customers even do like interesting stuff like a little chili or some people will add like a uh what's it called the salad dressing powders they'll add it and they make the probiotics into a dip um you know i i strained some in, for the video and and i accidentally went too long and it was like cream cheese and I stirred in some raspberry preserves and put it on a fresh toasted bagel. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> You're just going to love it. You it got sounds your own delicious. I'm factory. so looking forward to it. I can't wait till it comes in um, sometime this week. Um, question, uh, another techie question. Yeah. Um, milk refrigeration is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I take it right out of the refrigerator, am I going to damage the starters by pouring them into that cold of a liquid or how, how do you do it? No, no. So you always, I always want to store the starters in the freezer or the refrigerator just to keep them max freshness, the okay. seeds. So, so once you get them in the mail, just, I always say store them in the freezer or fridge for maximum freshness. So you can add it right. You just take the bottle right out of the fridge add the starters right to it. Um, and that's not a problem. We even had some milk that was in our, one of our other fridges and it was, it had ice chunks in it. And so I just went ahead and added the starter and, uh, and it took a lot longer because it had the thought, right. <laughs> and then it had to warm it up to body temperature, but yeah, it worked great. So okay. yep, that no problem. Uh, also don't shake it when it's warm. Um, because if you shake it when it's warm, the protein clumps will break up and you'll have a whole bunch of little protein clumps. And then the way throughout it, it, it looks like you blended it or something. So, I mean, it's fine if you do that, but personally, I would much rather just be very gentle, let it congeal and settle up. And, uh, so you have the least amount of whey separation. Um, but you know, you can always shake the whey back in uh, before you dispense or whatever. Yeah. That's whey protein. That's the expensive stuff that they add to sports drinks, you know, instead of, you know, that's like the, the most premium, uh, uh, proteins. Yeah. So. Um, have you had success? I know a lot of people aren't going to like putting a warmer on plastic. Um, have you had success in say like maybe gallon glass jars that, you know, you know, that they're right out of the dishwasher. So, you know, they're kind of sterilized. Can you just transfer the milk in and then put the starter in? So I do not like the idea of heating plastic, but since the maker only warms to body temperature, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting that plastic to a temperature where it's going to start expanding and it's going to start releasing the lichens and this and that. So, so, um, I, uh, we, we always recommend don't, don't introduce any areas for pathogens, you know, so customers will do whatever they like. We have customers who get, get bought milk in uh, glass bottles from a uh, local dairy that's been pasteurized. Uh, we have people who are doing all sorts of things, but as the manufacturer, we just like to say only use fresh pasteurized sealed bottles of milk or milk alternative 
so that there we aren't risking growing any pathogens. And I completely understand your position on that. And I think you're saying the right thing. Um, <laughs> I will probably experiment and might put some results on my own YouTube channel. Uh, I might even, who knows, may even try it with some uh, raw dairy right from a cow and see what happens. And I understand that you advise against that and you're supposed to so well done. Um, but yeah, um, we, are, um, we can only say use fresh, sealed, pasteurized yeah. bottles. Um, so there's no chance of growing any pathogens. So, all right, the but, scientist yeah. in me is going to have to experiment <laughs> and see what happens. <laughs> um, how long would you keep the end product in your refrigerator before deciding it's no longer good? So, again, customers will have varying results but as the manufacturer we always like to say you know start with the fresh pure pasteurized bottle of milk and then cons i like to consume it uh within a couple of weeks or before the expiration date uh whichever sooner that's yeah. like the the company policy um you know there's people who may have yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't want to get in any trouble. Or anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's all right. I'll get in trouble. All right. Uh, I'll be the troublemaker. Um, when do we always need uh, new starter cultures? Is it possible to use a portion of a previous batch as a starter? Advise so against I, it. Of I course. I get this question. When we were first doing the, uh, the 27 generations, um, I couldn't find a source of good starters. So we were using like uh, yogurts and Greek yogurts. I try and find the ones that had the most strains, but the results were so sporadic mm. because as the probiotics grow, and, and, and it, when you do one batch, it will go through the mesophilic temperatures, then it will end up more towards the thermophilic temperatures. So you're passing through all those stages Mm -hmm. And that's where you're getting the benefits of all 11 probiotics. But once it's finished, then, you know, you, you, you don't know if you're trying to reproduce a batch, you have no idea if you've got only getting one or two okay. of the stronger strains. So, so an expert said, you know, the, you, you can't reuse a, a batch because you're probably just going to get the stronger yogurt strains and you're going to miss out on all the the probiotics uh, of the others but from my perspective i don't want to risk uh, any contamination anywhere mm -hmm. and um also it was very important for me that we be able to save people money so if you you have the cost of a starter pack and you have a bottle of milk and you can make fresh 11 fresh probiotics for less than buying any probiotic pills powders drinks kefir yogurt even cheaper to make your own fresh the equivalent of 32 yogurts or 64 yogurt tubes yeah. it's cheaper than buying expired yogurts for $1.99 a case you're still getting it cheaper than that so I, you know, you're saving a ton of money. I would say, you know, I, I would say it's, it's smart to make sure you get all 11 probiotics and it's so inexpensive that nothing even compares. You can't buy anything for even close to that price. So how many starters should I buy at a time? And the, you know, some of this answer somehow tied into how long will they stay in my refrigerator? So the free, the, I always like for long-term storage, I always like to put the starters in uh, the freezer. So their, their best buy date is uh, almost a year from when you, when you ship them, like we're shipping ones right now, they expire next January of 2022. So almost a year away. So, but just, I always say, keep them in the freezer, keep them in the refrigerator, uh, you want to just keep them as fresh so that you make sure you get all 11 probiotics. Um, I ran some tests. I put a starter pack on the dash in the month of August in the Utah desert. And I put one in the center console and I cultured both of them and they both worked. It took like two and a half hours longer than normal. 
And uh, but I don't know if some of the the more mild probiotic strains were were kind of killed off by the heat. So you don't want extreme heat, um, and you want to keep them fresh in the freezer, um, and you know, and just uh, keep them fresh like you would your yeast or something. Okay. Well, great. Um, the probiotic maker, um, where are these being manufactured? So we actually manufacture these right here in the USA. When we we're doing the development um, to make them in the USA. I, I contacted every single company in the whole country that I could find that did anything even close. I mean, even the cutting edge technology where they're developing and, and like stuff like they use to make uh, computer circuit boards and things. So I checked into all of it. I only found one place that could produce them and they were gonna have to retail for $250 or more. And so my wife said, hey, you just want to help people. You, you're not going to get any money to help people if they're 250 bucks each. So she's like, try over in China. I'm like, I want to create jobs here. I want to help people here. But she's like, yeah, she had a point. So I tried over, you know, and producing in the top factories over in China. But they, it lost, cost us months and months of time and thousands and thousands of dollars because they cannot produce uh, ones that worked, they just couldn't. And then the costs were, were kind of high anyway. So finally, after much prayer and uh, contemplation or methane, whatever you want to say, we got an inspired design and manufacturing method so we can produce them here in the USA for less than the price uh, uh, the overseas in China. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's amazing. So you, know, you see the design, it's got the curves, you know, to remind us of a healthy gut and a healthy uh, waistline. Um, this elastic material here is designer dress material, costs 500% more than regular elastic material, but we want to do things right. In the covers, we use uh, 500 denier nylon, like the same stuff, the, the equivalent stuff that they use in military bags and things so they're and another thing is they're super light people will get it and they're like i got the box empty i'm like no no that has graphite in it like your <laughs> high-end cell phone and laptop that has graphite in there and we actually recycle the graphite and the insulation and so we use 100 percent recycled graphite and insulation so we're helping the environment we're we're keeping waste from going into landfills and we're getting the best premium products. And we just uh, recently, not too long ago, we were trying to figure out where to produce. We were, I tried the women's shelters, uh, single mothers, refugees, like we had in the past. I tried um, uh, organizations to help reforming convicts, um, homeless shelters. Uh, I felt I should buy some uh, industrial sewing machines, but I'm like, I don't have anywhere to put these. You know? <laughs> and uh, when it came time to uh, they announced that we, we were going to be on Shark Tank two months earlier than we anticipated, I called the prison system and I said, look, I know you guys have a place down south and you're like 100, 180 days out. I want to create new jobs up here at the prison locally. And they said, we're starting a program at the women's prison tomorrow. It wow. was like a miracle. And because I had felt the prompting to buy those industrial machines, we had machines and we had the inspired manufacturing methods. So we can help people who've never sewn before. We can help them learn a skill. They can, we, we pay to train them. Now they make three to 10 times as much as they could at other jobs in the prison. And so we are helping benefit a whole bunch of lives there. And then the finished inspired product is benefiting thousands of lives. And we want to benefit hundreds of millions of lives. Now that's tying it all together there. I'm, yeah. We're buying probiotic makers so that we can improve our lives while improving the lives of other people. I love it. It's so true. And another thing is, is uh, there's a little graphic uh, where one batch, you know, equals hundreds of pills, 16 protein shakes, 
32 yogurt, you know, that you buy at the store, 47 of those expensive sugary probiotic drinks that only have one strain and 64 or 64 yogurt tubes in one batch, one batch. So that one batch is going to save you a fortune. The pay maker pays for itself right away, but you are eliminating over 100 pieces of plastic and garbage per batch, one batch. So we have eliminated millions and millions of pieces of plastic and garbage from polluting our oceans and landfills. So, um, you know, it's just really exciting. I've got a, another inspired idea to, to help recycle the plastic out of the oceans and out of landfills. So, you know, I, I got to get this one going so we can, uh, uh, you know, we could do the other. We, we got all caught up on, on the uh, flood of orders. So, you know, order ship usually the next business day within the next business day in most cases. So yeah, all right. we're, uh, we're excited to, you know, we're all ramped up and, and we can help a lot more people now. Probioticmaker.com. Use the coupon code Dr. Haley without the period, not spelled out, just D-R-H-A-L-E-Y. Get yours today. And Merrick, I want to thank you so much for uh, for not only the product that you're making, but for you know the the inspiration and 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 following the you know your passion and and solving problems. I love, you know, your, your bio and the things that you have said and, and, you know, what inspires you to do these things. So just thank you for being that problem solver and for making this awesome, awesome product. Thank you. And I want to tell people just get it and try it. If you don't absolutely love it for any reason, you don't like the weather outside, just return it and get your money back, but you're not going to return it. I've only had one person out of thousands and thousands of orders say their family didn't like it. And she wasn't sweetening it for her family. It's like, you know, most people don't like raw, straight up uh, tart probiotics. So, so even in that case, it, it, there wouldn't have been a return if, uh, if she had flavored it the way their family, you know, flavored the taste for her family. So, you know, satisfaction guaranteed, Bless your lives right now. And if you don't absolutely love it, return it and get your money back. And we just, uh, yeah, we just want to help people. So awesome. please spread the word. <laughs> oh, Merrick, thank you so much. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. I appreciate all that you do. Thank you for uh, helping spread the word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.